The goal of opening strategy is to get your pieces out as quickly as possible and make them active because you cannot really attack with one or two pieces. One of the best way to do it is to push central pawn so your pieces can get out. E4, an excellent opening move, putting a pawn in the center and opening lines for bishop and queen to get out. If white is allowed, he would like to play d4 next move and control a lot of squares in the center. So black must do the same, fight for the center as well. But why is center so important? Because when you have pieces in the center, they are the most powerful. Imagine having knight on d4. That knight would attack 8 different squares there. And if the knight is in the corner, it attacks only 2 squares. Also, the knight in the center is attacking a lot of squares in the opponent's territory. So now he has to avoid those squares. e5 has the same purpose as e4, knight f3, developing a piece and attacking a pawn, which is great. Now black has to respond by protecting this pawn and he cannot do whatever he wants. The knight is developed towards the center and puts a pressure on two critical squares in the center. In general, it's better to develop knights before bishops because bishops are already active on their initial square. Also, you're pretty sure that you're gonna develop knight on f3 and not on h3 away from the center or e2 blocking up the bishop. And then you can decide where to develop your bishops. The rest of the game will show the best square for them. So black has to defend his pawn. There is few ways to do it. We have f6, queen f6, queen e7, bishop d6, d6 and knight c6. f6 is a terrible move. This square is reserved for the knight and also blocks the queen. And black should move pieces first of all in the opening and not pawns. Queen f6 bad as well. Knight should go here and also we are wasting huge power that queen has to defend the pawn. Queen e7 is blocking this bishop. Bishop d6 we are blocking this pawn. d6 is not a bad move. This bishop can get out now but it blocks this bishop. Knight c6 the best move. Developing a piece towards the center and protecting the pawn at the same time. Bishop c4 developing a bishop in the center and attacking f7. f7 pawn is particularly vulnerable and there are a lot of sacrifices on that pawn. Bishop c5 doing the same thing. c3, white wants to push d4 and get two powerful pawns in the center. The second goal is to bring queen to b3 and to put more pressure on f7. But there is a disadvantage to this move as well. It occupies the square that is reserved for the knight. Queen e7, developing a queen and preventing d4 because after takes takes, Queen will win a pawn. Castle, getting the king into the safety and also rook into the game. d6, making the center stronger, protecting a bishop as well. And now c8 bishop can get out. d4, hoping that black would take, where white would have beautiful center and c3 square for his knight. If black takes here, hoping for takes and takes, white will punish it by playing rook e1, winning a queen. Bishop b6, black doesn't want to take and to give white strong center but instead he keeps up the pressure and he will take only in the moment when it benefits him. So the pawn on d4 is under the pressure because it is attacked by 3 pieces so white needs to be careful. If he plays queen b3 then pawn will fall, the same is with knight b to d2 and the queen is no longer protecting d4. Also black is threatening bishop g4 to take the piece that is protecting d4. a4, white decided to set up a trap, the threat is a5, for example if black plays some random move h6 then a5, if takes then d5 and this bishop will lose support and if knight takes then takes takes and queen a4 check, picking up the bishop. But nevertheless, white's attack is premature, he should develop his pieces and then attack. a6, black has to save his bishop, so he makes the room for him to retreat. a5, white is still hoping that black will take the pawn, but no, bishop a7, and h3. So white is trying to prevent bishop g4. This move weakened the king a little bit, the pawn moves in front of the king should only be played if necessary. Knight f6 developing and threatening to take pawn on e4. d takes e5, trying to open up the position, but that benefits only the player that has better development, and that is in this case black, so it was mistake for white to open up the position. Black takes with the knight, now the knight is really powerful in the center, also by taking, now this bishop is really powerful, aiming at the king. White takes the knight, and thus losing a defender of the king. Queen takes knight, now queen is really powerful in the center, attacking e4, 
and is also quick to attack on the king side. Knight d2, trying to protect the pawn, hoping that black would take and lose a queen. But of course, black is not interested in losing a queen. He has a superior position and he's looking for a finishing blow. And that is bishop takes h3, takes and queen g3, using the pin, king h1, taking another pawn, king goes back, and now knight g4. Threatening checkmate. White cannot play rook e1 because of bishop f2. Checkmate. That's why he played knight f3, now queen g3, king h1, and bishop f2, winning all three pawns in front of the king. White resigned here because of the threat. Let's say white plays some random move. Queen h3, mate. If rook takes bishop, then this is a mate as well. This wasn't mentioned in a book, but actually, white has computer defense here, bishop f7, if takes, queen d5, and this is going to be a perpetual. You can check this line for yourself, there are some interesting variations.